Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. This video is a sequel to my video on Dead Man's Chest, so watch that before you go further. The best thing you can say about At World's End is that it isn't Pirates 5. That means it's the second worst in the franchise. I didn't love Dead Man's Chest, but it had some interesting ideas. But this movie feels like it knows where it wants to go, but doesn't know how to get there. We spend 20 minutes with Barbosa, Will, and Elizabeth trying to get a ship so they can rescue Jack from the afterlife. Then it's almost 40 more minutes before they make it back to the real world. At least with Dead Man's chest, the movie only wasted my time in the first half hour. After they get off Cannibal Island, the movie knew what it was doing. Here, if we're not wasting an hour getting to the premise set up at the end of the second movie, we're jumping all over the place with what I will call the Captain Jack Sparrowing of the cast. As soon as our heroes make it back from the afterlife, the status quo changes about four times in less than five minutes, thanks to endless betrayals. Will betrays the crew of the Pearl, then he's betrayed by Sal Fang, then he's betrayed by Cutler Beckett, who is making a deal with Jack, while Bar Barbosa makes a deal with Sal Fang. Then later, Will makes a deal with Jack. Will makes a deal with Beckett. Then Beckett makes a deal with Elizabeth. Barbosa betrays Elizabeth, who just betrayed Jack and is upset at Barbosa for betraying Jack. Barbosa betrays Calypso. You see where I'm going with this? It's impossible to keep up with what's going on when everyone has hidden agendas. This was fine in the first movie when Jack was the only one keeping everyone on their toes. But when every character in the movie is doing it, it becomes dizzying. I suspect this was done to disguise the fact that no Nobody knew how to get to the end of the movie. I was puzzled why Beckett wanted Davy Jones to kill the Kraken off screen in between movies. This movie opens with a chilling scene of pirates getting hanged, and it does a good job setting the mood. But you had a Kraken you could have ordered to hunt down all pirate vessels. Why get rid of that and resort to mundane hanging? Not all pirates will be on the water, but your main goal was control of the seas. The Kraken gives you that. These two movies are trying to be about how the good old days of being a pirate are coming to a close. Beckett represents that new New world order that doesn't have room for mystical krakens, but he's perfectly willing to keep immortal fishmen in his employ. They realize they wrote themselves into a corner with this unkillable monster that prevents our characters from going anywhere on the ocean, in a movie that depends on characters traveling by sea. But you've invented all kinds of weird magic. Say our heroes got some kraken-proof underwear from the lady who brought Barbosa back. I won't connect Tia Dalma to Davy Jones. This didn't make much sense to me. Davy Jones was betrayed by his lover. Now he's stuck ferrying souls for eternity. That makes sense. Then we are told his lover is Tia Dalma, and she's not a human being, she's a goddess trapped in human form. And Davy Jones is the one who told the Pirate Council how to trap her in human form. So you're telling me regular human Davy Jones had a physical relationship with a 50-foot goddess who can turn into crabs? Now they have treatment for that. Back then, not so much. Don't bring Davy Jones's lover into the mix. She doesn't do anything except stare at Will anytime there's any mention of someone becoming the new captain of the Flying Dutchman. She clearly knows he's going to be the next captain, but how? Can she see the future? If so, that would have been a handy power to use many times in the course of this movie. We begin with the crew of the Pearl already on a ship. They've got a magic spell protecting them from the Kraken, but to replicate the eerie opening scene the movie gave us, they pass a ship recently destroyed by the Kraken on their way to the underworld. I want to show Jack and Barbosa are changed from their times in the afterlife. Even if it's only been a couple of weeks, it feels like Jack has spent lifetimes in purgatory, and Barbosa was there longer. In the movie, after 10 minutes of Jack acting loony, he's back to acting like he did before. There should be consequences in these movies. Jack and Barbosa being killed should not be a minor inconvenience. These guys have seen hell. At least one of them should be worried about the condition of his mortal soul now that they have a second chance. Jack thinks he could smooth talk the devil out of his throne, so he's not worried, but his devil may care attitude is lessened. That might not be as fun to watch, but it would at least be a direction to take this character instead of him doing the drunken rock Rockstar con man thing all the time. Barbosa's trying to walk the path of righteousness with a shade of his old scoundrelness. Audiences don't want to be preached to, but they don't have to be. When Jack finds out Barbosa is trying to be a better person, he's worried Barbosa will throw the rum overboard. Barbosa says he's busy getting his own soul in shape. He isn't going to micromanage everyone else. He won't quote scripture, but it'll be obvious he's a changed man. Gibbs is worried Jack is going to grab a sword and come at him. But when Jack sees all of them, he's happy to see them, even his friend who sent him here. Gibbs says, eh, you're not so mad about 
about the whole, Jack says, nah, you were just following the code, mate. They hug it out, we move on. I want Cutler Beckett out of the movie as fast as possible. With Barbosa and Jack being brought back from the dead, the walls to the underworld have been broken. We won't have a pirate zombie apocalypse, though, let's be honest, how cool would that be? They'd be fine when they're at sea, but when they go to land to get new supplies, it's zombie city. Anyway, nothing like that. Your savvy people will find a way to cross over, but not too world-breaking. The rules have changed, and Davy Jones ain't too happy about it. He's ferried souls for centuries. Now some idiot broke the wall that keeps the dead from coming back. Whoever changed the rules did so because of Cutler Beckett holding a leash on the Kraken. So Davy Jones kills Beckett. Beckett is outraged the Kraken isn't following his orders. Davy Jones says, The Kraken will kill anyone for you, but we're already dead. We can kill off John Taylor too. He was a good foil for Jack, but with Beckett being taken out, no need for John Taylor either. With the Kraken in Davy Jones's hands, he'll say, You mortals are going to spit in my face after centuries of hard work. I won't wait for you at death's door anymore. I'll send you all there right now. Who cares if the wall is broken? I'll send you right back. Things get apocalyptic across the seas. Commodore Norrington realizes he's responsible for this. Beckett didn't do this, but who's to say he wouldn't have? Once he tasted the power of the Kraken, what if he set himself up as Emperor of Earth? Norrington could have prevented this if he hadn't brought the Kraken controlling thingamadoo to Beckett. Unlike the movie we got, where Norrington does a heroic sacrifice five minutes after he realizes his boss is corrupt, Norrington will have to try to fix this. Since I don't have Will Turner to replace Davy Jones as Captain of the Dutchman, Norrington will. Since I didn't set up the Heart as a mechanism of defeating Davy Jones in the previous movie, that's what our heroes are after in this movie. Our heroes go to Tia Dalma, she tells them about the heart, but it's a perilous journey. I'd want Norrington to hook up with our heroes after they rescue Jack so he can be with them and begin his redemption at the top of the second act. I didn't hate the idea of faking your audience out. Maybe Jack is going to become the new Davy Jones. This might be the last Pirates film, so we might do it. Except the movie was hitting us over the head with it being Will, so Jack contemplating it never sold me. If you're going to try to trick us, you need to do a good job. Jack loves the sea, but he also tried to trick 100 innocents into enslavement so he wouldn't be trapped on that boat. Plus, he seems too in love with the lusts of the flesh to want to give that up for a pretty arduous job. But our version of Jack has mellowed out, and sees trading places with Davy Jones as a necessary evil to save the world. Or Barbosa could do it, with how he's trying to be a better person. He would see this as his path to redemption. It should be a surprise when Norrington finally does it. The Pirate Council convenes, though I would want to shift the focus a little. Davy Jones realizes Jack and Barbosa are getting close to the heart, so he raises an army of undead to stop them, since the Kraken can't seem to. The Pirate Council gather because business is getting difficult. They think they can bargain with Davy Jones. If they bring in Barbosa and Jack, he might let them keep pirating. He probably wouldn't, but they remain hopeful. Our heroes have their backs against the wall, no army at their side. The army didn't do anything in a climax anyway, but this would explain why they aren't helping. You have your war against Davy Jones, Norrington becomes the new captain, and instead of Barbosa betraying Jack, he goes off into the sunset to live his life and find new purpose away from the life of piracy. Jack sticks with the crew of the Pearl. Their victory convinces him it's okay to smile. We won. That's it for this one. Come back next week for another pirate-related video, matey.